Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how I use Dune and how I go about making queries. Um, in order to do this, I'm going to show you how I made a query from one of my more popular, more popular dashboards. That is uh, the one you're looking at right now, which is the state of the NFT secondary market uh, on Ethereum. Um, here, when, one that I think is important or many are curious about is this one. Uh, this is the, the daily uh, NFT's uh, USD volume uh, per platform. So you can see they're stacked on top of one another and all the platform volume. And uh, in order to do this, uh, I've created a separate dashboard that uh, for now you can see is private, but you will be able to see and it won't be private when this video will be live. Um, th in this dashboard, I uh, I will show you at the end how I made this dashboard, but also uh, here you can see the step-by-step -step, uh, process I go through in order to end up like the query you've seen in the other dashboard that I just showed. Um, so in order to start, I'm going to start fresh on a uh, Dune creating a new query. So yeah, just like this. And yeah, so uh, in order to, since we want to analyze Dex trades, um, I'm sorry, I mean NFT trades, uh, we're going to use the, the table that was created uh, by Dune, the Dune team, which is called NFT.trades. So here you can see a trade with Ness. You can see it on the left. Um, so you can import the name of the table right here just through this simple error. You can also see all the different columns that are available on this table. Um, and what we're going to do is just do a select star. This means select all from this table. Now, if I just did this, the table is pretty big, so it would be very long to run and I don't recommend doing it. But if I want to just create the last 100, Sorry, 100 of them. I do limit 100 and I press run. And here is a sample of 100 different rows, rows that uh, are within the stable. Now, this is not, this is just a sample, and it, you can see it's a random sample uh, from various states. But I would like to make more sense of this. Let's say uh, I want the last 100. So what I can do is order the query by uh, block number. Uh, and if I do this, it automatically sort, uh, sorts in ascending order. So since I want the last 100, I want to start in descending order. And if I run this, it might take a bit. But here we are, we have the last 100 uh, rows from this table. Um, you can see there's various info in this table. Um, and yeah, this is the end of uh, step one. So now moving on to um, step two, I want to analyze further uh, one of the columns, that is the platform column. So here you can see all of those are OpenSea but I want to see which other platforms are available in that table. So this is mostly just an analytical phase where I want to study the table before I dive into it. And the way I go about it is um, I can remove those uh, last bits. I'll remove it for now. And instead of selecting star, which means to select everything in the table, um, I want to look into the distinct platform values. So if I do with the tag distinct in front of the field I want to gather, uh, I will only get the unique unique different options the platform can be. So let's see, I can run it now. And this should give me a list of six different values. i just let it run for a bit. So here we are. Here we can see the six different values that uh, the platform column, uh, platform uh, fields can take. 
uh, in the, within the table. So foundation, lava labs, looks rare, open sea, rareable, and super rare. Um, yeah, this, I'm not gonna use this right now, but uh, it will be useful later on. Uh, uh, yeah, it will be useful later on and you'll understand why. Um, so moving on to step three, here the goal is to finally make uh, the first visualization, which is the total daily volume. So first I'm going to remove this. I don't need this thing platforms anymore. Um, and I want the daily volume per day. As you remember in the first uh, dashboard, that's what we had. So I'm going to use, uh, since all the rows have a different timestamp, I want to bundle them into um, into each in, each into a day. So what I do is I use a function called date trunk. So here you can see me writing it. And I want to bundle them by day. You can also do hour, minute, uh, week, month, year, uh, and a bunch of others maybe. Uh, but I think those are the more useful ones. And I'm going to use the field called block time. Now remember this, I know this field because I've studied, I've, I've used this uh, table before, but you can look into here all the all the different fields available, but you can also look at the sample 100 uh, rows like I showed you earlier, uh, allowing you to better understand the table. So here I'm gonna use block time, which is the timestamp. Um, I wanna give it a name, so I'm gonna say as date, uh, I put it in between quotes so I can uh, have capital letters in the names. Um, this is just for me, for visualization. I think it's it's nicer if I can have capital letters. Um, and then what I want is the amount of volume. Uh, so what I do is, uh, okay, first wait, I want to make sure it knows that I'm aggregating um, based on this first date field. So I'm going to do a group by uh, date trunk. I could do just date here. There's three different options actually. I can group by uh, just date like this. Uh, this means this will select the first row. I could also just group by this instead. This would be the exact same. Or I could also group by one, which means the first, uh, the first, uh, the first value I want to return, the first um, field. And I don't recommend using uh, one, two, three, or whatever number because it gets confusing when uh, you're uh, looking over other people's uh, work or even over yourself's work. Um, I think if, if you can put the name of either the row or the actual row itself, uh, it's more explicit. So I'll use date here. But yeah, I think it's more explicit and way easier to read and understand. Uh, so here it's grouping by date. I also want to order by date. This is purely for visual purposes. Once again, it's only going to apply to the um, to the to the query results uh, here. It's going to organize them by date. But if uh, when I'll create a visualization, this doesn't matter. I'll I'll show this actually uh, later on. Um, here I'm going to do a sum. Uh, function. So I want to add all of the volume that's been gathered up throughout the day on all the different rows that are concerned with the day. Uh, here I'm going to use a function. Um, so the fields I could use, there's uh, original amount, but the thing with this is this, this original amount is going to give me a, a row number, but it could be denominated in Ethereum, in uh, USDC, and in any other currencies. So to, have, to avoid this, um, I'm going to use the USD uh, amount here, the USD amount field that's here. And um, so I'm just going to do USD amount uh, as, and once again, between quotes, total volume. Um, so yeah. Let's run this and see what we get. And it might take a few minutes to compute the entire timeline. A few seconds, maybe. I mean. Okay. 
Okay, so here we have the entire history day by day uh, going up to the 22nd of February, which is today. Uh, and from uh, the June 23rd from 2017, which I guess is the first day where OpenSea, um, the first day yeah, when OpenSea uh, had a trade. Um, so what I can do is open a visualization to actually visualize the data on a chart. Uh, I'll use a bar chart where the, each bar is one day. I think that looks good. And here we can see there's a problem. That's a slight issue, but it's nothing important. It's because there are, um, so this, this USD amount field is calculated automatically by Dune um, based on a few parameters, but uh, there's a bug right now where if multiple currencies are used uh, through an aggregator, it's complex, but if an aggregator is used, it might mess up because of the different currencies. So I'm going to remove two different um, transactions that uh, have um, that cause this problem. I'm just going to copy this field here. It's nothing important, but these two transaction hashes, uh, I can eliminate them by hash. And if I rerun, um, it's going to eliminate, eliminate those two transactions that uh, calculate an absurd uh, value for USD amount that completely skew the bar chart that I want to look into. So yeah, I'll just keep this uh, uh, here. I just yeah, easy elimination process of these uh, by the, the the hash field, which is unique per transaction, um, unless why well, unique per uh, yeah per transaction. Sorry, not unique per row because if if one row has uh, multiple NFTs being sold going to correspond to the same hash, but that doesn't matter here. Um, and also these two transactions uh, have a very negligible amount of uh, uh, USD amounts. I, I checked myself, it's one of them is maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars worth and the other is like 20, I think. Um, and here we can see that uh, we have the entire history. Um, yeah, and the volume per day. So pretty simple. This was very easy to get to and yeah this concludes step three um, and now let's look into step four uh, step four is actually really easy it's nothing important but I, I, I it's nothing big but I thought uh, uh, it would be interesting to section by, by platform especially for later on you, you'll, you'll see how it comes in handy for the later steps and what we can do is add a word tag where where platform, so that's the field we studied before, is equal to, I'm going to select OpenC. It needs to be written in the exact same way uh, it is in the field. So this is, I know this is how it is. And we don't, since we have two word tags, I want to change this to and instead. Um, and yeah, if I rerun this, I'm going to have the total volume for the OpenSea platform day by day. So the exact same chart, except that only OpenSea volume is showing up. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty simple, uh, nothing major. Oh yeah, and one thing I forgot to show you is, um, I told you this doesn't matter. This is solidly here for ordering by day. Uh, but Dune automatically does this in a bar chart since it's ordering by date. So if I comment this out, I just want to show it doesn't matter and it's actually more optimized without this field. I recommend only using it for visual uh, when you're working with the data so you, so you know where you're going and you can easily reference. But here you can see the bar chart works fine without that field. Um, so yeah, just uh, something to note, uh, I guess. I'll keep it in because while I work on the query, I like to keep it, but I usually uh, remove it at the end. So uh, let's move on to step five. And here is where we actually get more information than just the volume. Um, uh, I'm gonna add therefore a few other uh, columns to my uh, query results. 
So right now we only have date and total volume, but uh, actually we change this to volume. That makes it easier. And here we're gonna add the count transaction. Um, and this is done by just counting the number of rows. So I can just do this with the star it means count row, whatever there are. Uh, as once again between big text because I like uh, to have capital letters transactions. Okay, uh, so if I run this, it should work fine. Uh, I'm also gonna tab there. I like to have this separate, makes it easier to read for me. Um, yeah, and you can see here the transaction counts per day is also present. Um, there's other tags that can be, other columns that can be easily computed. computed. Um, so I can also count, but instead of counting all the rows, I can count the distinct, so it's different values uh, existing for a single field. And I'm going to use the buyer field. So that's going to give me the count of buyers on the OpenSea platform uh, for every single day. Um, so yeah, buyers. And I can do the same for uh, sellers. So distinct seller as sellers. So if I run this, take a bit of time. That's mostly once again, like I said, like because of this, but for optimization purposes, you can remove it at the end. I strong, and I strongly recommend it if uh, you are doing this for um, for a visualization that's already ordered by date automatically through the bar chart. Um, and now because of the distinct field, it takes a bit more time to compute, of course, as well. All right, so here we have the results. Um, interesting. So. Since I changed the, the the name of the column, it's not it doesn't know what it wanted to show. So that is volume. That's what we had before. But I can also look at transactions per day. I can also look at the number of buyers or sellers. Or we can also have uh, I don't know for example buyers and sellers. You can see those over time. You can have any combination of those. Uh, we're going to stick our observations to volume for now since that's what we're interested in for this uh, query. Um, so the next step is uh, where we're going to start to split in between the different uh, platforms. So right now we we saw uh, how it is for OpenSea, but I want to split per platform uh, from this inquiry. So I'm going to remove this tag. Actually, I'm going to, sorry going to remove this like this because I want us to become aware, right? And um, I'm going to uh, keep the date. That is interesting, of course. I'm going to remove those. Don't need those for now. This was just to showcase the possibility of using that table. Um, but uh, since I don't have the where field at the bottom, I'm going to use a case uh, close. So, here I do case when, and the same way I put it in the where uh, at the bottom, I'm going to use where platform equals open C, then sum as uh, instead of otherwise, I'm not going to call all the column volume, otherwise, it's going to be confusing. So I'm going to call it open C. Seems simple enough. Um, I also need to add an end here, and for extra clarity, I'm going to put some brackets here and here. All right, um, so there are six different platforms as we saw at the beginning. I'm going to copy this line. And... OK, 
Okay, here are six different ones. Um, another one, so I'm just going to change the names one by one. Looks rare. Then we have rareable. Then we have super rare. This refers back to, I think it was, uh, I think it was step two. Uh, so what we found in step two. Um, open seat, super rare. Then we have Lava Labs contract. Make sure to really write them the same way, otherwise um, it's not going to work, right? It's it's case sensitive and it's any character uh, counts, otherwise you get the wrong value. Uh, I also need to change the name, of course. So foundation. Contract, super rare, rare goal, and finally looks rare. Okay. Let me run this. It's not happy. What have I done? Oh yeah, okay. Okay, so instead of just group by date, we also need to add it full. But otherwise, yeah, this should work fine. So here we can see the results. Now, one problem is, since we're grouping by date, but also per platform, we're going to see that we have um, well, when there are six different values, it's going to have six different um, six different values per day. And as for the six different platforms, since it's grouping not only per day, but also the platform on top. So uh, in order to remedy this, I'm going to use this query as a source for another query. So kind of like the form, the from, uh, this is going to be the, the from uh, for another query. I could nest it and do a from here where uh, all of this is between parentheses, but I think that's not as clear as using another method, which is called with. Uh, I put with and I call it set separated volume. As in here, I put the whole thing between parentheses. And like I said, I don't need that last thing, so I'm just going to remove it. Uh, this was only for me, uh, for looking into it, uh, the purpose of only um, uh, working with it more easily. And here I'm going to call this query. So I'm going to do a from separated. So there's a nice autofill from the Dune. I can select date as the first field. Then I'm going to sum up by, col by um, column. So here I want to sum up, uh, for example, if we look at all these days, all these six, I want to sum up for OpenSea or all OpenSea's columns. Here, same for looks rare and so on. So what I'm going to do is do a sum as not filling it in yet because I'm going to copy paste it. So here. Open C. Looks rare. Autofill, but it's actually very nice. Um, then we have super rare. Then we have a uh, foundation. And afterwards, we'll have variable. 
I didn't use the same order as before, but it, as above, I mean, but I don't think that really, I think that hardly matters. Uh, yeah, so it's not happy because I didn't group by, of course, but if I do group by, so to demonstrate, I can just do just one, this is the first field, it's then updates, but it's essentially the same thing. And while it runs, I'm just going to reorganize to match so OpenSea looks rare wearable. Super rare. And here we're seeing. Okay, so I didn't order by date, but I can click here. And if I sort, if I click twice, so the first time it doesn't sort by it, then, and you'll see it's highlighted, that means it's sorting in ascending order. So from oldest to newest, you see Lava Labs started in uh, on June 23rd. Oh, actually, yeah, sorry. I, th I said it was OpenSea before, but it's actually Lava Labs that started this early. And if I order the other way around, now I can see that we actually have volume for each of those. Uh, here it's blank, it just means there wasn't volume for the day, I believe. Um, or I mean, not yet. Uh, it's only part, it's only through the, the 22nd of February. Um, but yeah, so this is group by one. Uh, but once again, like I said, I prefer to use date here. It's much easier, it's more explicit. Uh, I also like this is just nitpicking, but also I think you should be uh, wary of how you present because it makes easier for other people. So here I tab it for the for the source. Well, I don't tap this, but I tap these other columns. I like to have these distinct. You can also see how I use capital letters for stuff like case, uh, select as, then, and uh, group by, where, not. Uh, all these fields, all these tags that are highlighted in dark green, I, uh, I have this specific uh, capital letter also for the formulas, so sum here, for example, um, which, I, which is here as well. Uh, this is personal preference, of course, and yeah, not something you have to do, of course. But let me rerun this one last time. Okay, so here we have, and if we look at this, I can add all the different um, fields we have. Variable, super rare, lava labs, contract, and foundation. Uh, and here we have all of the different values you can see. Now, uh, we're gonna look into step seven which is actually making the chart uh, easy to read because right now, if you're looking at it, just a, a glance, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see what's happening even through it with the mouse. The numbers are are, are not very uh, easy to read, and I'll show what you can do. All the things I do at least to make those easy to read. So the first thing I do is um, I instead of using this graph. Here, I mean, it really depends on the context, but here I want to use a stacked graph. So I'm going to enable, enable stacking. And here you can see it's already much easier to read and to see which uh, takes the, 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 the biggest market share. You can also even for just market share, you can look into this which is percentage. Now, I don't recommend per day, but there's different uh, thing you, you should, I think, use at least per week. Uh, for aggregating um, per percentage, otherwise you have this huge noise that very dependent on the day and anything can happen, but whatever. So I'm not going to use percentage here anyways. Um, but what I'd like to do is, for example, here, uh, one thing is Lava Labs contracts. I think Lava Labs is explicit enough. So I'm just going to remove contracts. Don't need to know that it's contract. No one really cares. Anyone can assume that. I'm just going to rerun it. Hopefully, it 
Lead doesn't take too long. Okay, so of course it removes the column since uh, changed name, so it doesn't know what it is. But I'm going to add Lava Labs back, and here we have it. So here's everything. Uh, like I said, the numbers are hard to read. So what I like to do is go into here and look at label format. And here, wait, not pounds. So I use the the little. Um, Hashtag, if you put one, it's just going to put uh, the rounded integer of the number, right? Um, so, yeah, this is just two rounded integers. So, look, if I remove it, and if I add it back, you can see the change. But if I, um, if what I like to do is have commas between the every, every three uh, integers, if that makes sense. Can I try mix it? easy to read so you can do this uh, you can even do this uh, I like to do this because it makes it explicit what I'm doing uh, you can also have decimal values so here you can decide how many oh wait no so uh, um, what you can also do is here, for example, OpenC, we can see that it has a zero also for super rare at the last decimal. But you can decide to do this, put them between brackets, and it only shows the decimal points if it's not a zero. If it's a zero, it rounds it up. It doesn't need to be, I mean, it doesn't round it up, but it doesn't show the last zero. Uh, removes any trailing zeros, basically. That's what I like to do. Uh, since it's USD values, though, I don't think uh, the daily uh, volume should be more than uh, to the rounded uh, dollar because it's not no one really cares what uh, happens at the sub dollar level I guess and yeah so this makes the value easier to read you can even for in order to be super explicit you can add a dollar sign here so all the values start with a dollar sign that way you really know where you're looking at um, I'm actually going to save this query, which I haven't even started to do. So, nft.trades analysis, I guess. Uh, wait, no. Uh, I'm going to say um, nft platforms USD volume. Just going to call it this. Needs to when you save the query, it automatically reruns it. I have a few more things I want to show. Just need to wait for it to run. Okay, yeah, in the meantime, actually, I can click on the pencil up there and I can set a description. So if I say, uh, Let's say we're here presenting the data. It actually shows a subtitle to the chart. Uh, this can be nice. You can check on my on my uh, dashboards how I use them. Uh, sometimes they say ordered by day. Sometimes they say, uh, yeah, I don't know, <laughs> so various different things. But um, yeah, I think it's easy to read that way. Um, it's it's nicer. It allows for more uh, better presentation, I guess. Um, another thing is this chart. Uh, so we could use a wait no log scale here, uh, which looks pretty weird. Okay, but um, so we could here this whole space is almost is useless because we can't see anything, even if we increase the size um, we can't see anything starting from 
a bit over a year ago. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make it so that only select few uh, a select number of last of past days are shown. So in the in the from I'm going to once again change this to an end, but here at a where I could just put an end uh, below, but I don't know. Um, so here I want to filter by block time, and I want to make sure block time are later than so over. Uh, and here parenthesis, I'm going to use the date trunk so I can filter by at the very start of a day. Uh, once again, day. Uh, I'm going to use the now function, which uh, gives you the timestamp when the query is run precisely. Uh, and I'm going to use an interval. And here, what did I say? I said, uh, I said a year. Well, let's just do one year. I think it's All right. So if I run this, should only show, I mean, should only compute further values uh, from, yeah, exactly, from the last year, exactly one day away. Um, yeah, so that's all the best here. It makes the charts much more, much easier to read. You can also change this uh, interval to uh, here, let's say, nine months. So yeah, month, days, whatever, it all works. I'll keep like nine months actually. And one last thing I don't like is this uh, last day. So right now, uh, if it wants to highlight it properly. So this last day, so 22nd of February is ongoing. So the data isn't complete. And I know a lot of people are gonna screenshot this graph, but may misinterpret it where uh, they say this last day's value are the final values. Or in fact, they're not because they're constantly being updated throughout the day, right? Until the days close. So what I want to do to remedy this is to add another tag, which is and also block time, where block time is lower than um, date trunk filter by day, and now. So this is going to filter anything that is uh, from earlier than the start of the day. So it's going to end on the 21st, basically. So if I do this, let it once again run. And here we are, and we can see that the last date is 21st. So that's great. Um, that's what I wanted. Um, and I believe that in terms of presenting this chart, we reached the end. But I'm going to show you a few other things that can be done, which is a counter. This should be this. These are the other visualization type. Actually, before counter, let me show you area. So instead of bar charts, you can also use area. The same is doable. You can you can stack. You can uh, well, this isn't stack, but you can stack here, uh, and it's the same. It's just the visual um, presentation is different. And actually, one of my so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show this, but uh, you also have line charts. Same goes here. Just data presentation is different. Um, another thing is uh, pie chart. I don't know if this is going. No, this is not make sense because now it's going to be put date. So you can also play with this visualization. Here it doesn't make sense because it's sectioned in one column. So open C per day doesn't make sense at all uh, to show this. 
you may also have a two different types of uh, chart visualization. So I want to say bar chart. Uh, here I don't see why you would have separate visualization, but for other data types you can. So here bar charts for OpenC. But if I want to have looks rare as a line, I can change it here, right? And you can see different values. You can even have separate axis. So here, if I unlabel right axis, I can change here the thing to be only on the right axis. So this uses different, you can see the order uh, size, so 500 million here, whereas in the same level, it's roughly the same level as 200 million. So this scales it to exploit the full height of the graph for both scales. Um, yeah, so that's it for the, for the I guess, uh, the historical charts, I guess. But you also have, you can also create a table. So that set of here, you have the query, it says query results. You can just say table and that way it's easier, it removes the query result and you can also integrate this into different uh, dashboards. And one last one is a counter. Uh, here it plays a single value from a single column. So this is just the date. Uh, it doesn't really, that's the date from, uh, it doesn't matter. But let's say OpenSea, for example, I wanna see the OpenSea and that's the first row of OpenSea. Now, what thing you kind of do, wanna do is, since you want the first row here, you need actually to order by date. And now depending on descending or ascending, make sure you know what you're doing. Descending is gonna put the latest date at the top, whereas uh, ascending is gonna put the earliest date at the top. Uh, so if I run this, once again, take a few minutes, a few seconds, I mean, sorry. Bit more time as well because of the ordering that I just put in. Um, all right, and here I can do so any column, and if I do one, I'm gonna see that this 193,000 million 810 is matching the one from yesterday. Right, so that's the value from yesterday. Um, but if I put minus one, I can also select the earliest date so just by minus one. But I can also, I don't know, if I know an exit count, so if I put uh, y, okay, two, that's from one day ago. Uh, if I put three, blah, 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 and you can, you can change this. You can also change the decimal points that is shown here once again zero is fine you can show two three four blah 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 up to nine and the label at the bottom suffix so here I can do a uh, let's do an emoji actually uh, all right I put a suffix here prefix I can also, like I showed before, I could put a dollar. Uh, this means nothing. I can also remove this so it doesn't show the counter up top. Um, or you can say, okay, uh, open C volume, uh, which changes it here. But if I want to keep this either blank, I put a space, usually that's me. But um, you can also write anything you want. So yeah, that's how counters work. I think that's pretty useful. But uh, otherwise, I think that's it in terms of the actual visualization part. Um, now let's look back into uh, this dashboard that I made uh, because a few more things come into play, which is the organization of the dashboard and how to how to make how to, to arrange the queries into a, an easier way. So. Uh, first you create a dashboard, then you press edit here. And let's first look into the settings. So I'm going to first make it public. Now you can see it when uh, 
you view it. Here you can change the title and you can also change the tags. Uh, the tags are here to the few hashtags and that's for uh, uh, Dune search tool so you can search by hashtags. I'll save it. And there's two different things you can add. So a text widget as well as a visualization. Visualization is uh, the queries that we saw before and different visualizations. So for example, this is a visualization, but this also is a visualization or any other kind that we saw here uh, when we look at the different types. Then the text widgets are these uh, little boxes uh, that I made. So here, uh, the first one is to show the image. I'll show you how to use this. Here is kind of the title with, uh, I'll show you hyperlinks and everything. Here you can see also how I highlighted this. Uh, I have made it bold, I guess. Uh, and then the, I use it to break down step by steps. That's the steps I went through throughout the, the, the thing. Step one, step two, step three, four, five, six, seven. And here's the final result we just saw. <clears throat> um, so adding those should be fairly easy. Just add a visualization. And I add the one I just created. Press done. And here I can scale it to how I want. Uh, yeah, and I, I can and I can move it around as well. So let me just delete this because it's already there. Okay, uh, and let's look into first this. So this is the easiest and it's just a normal line. So you can type whatever you want and it'll be displayed. And this is using the language Markdown. So Markdown, you can look online uh, different um, syntax uh, that can be used through throughout the language. But I'm going to show you the essential, uh, what I think is essential, uh, or I mean useful for Dune here. So here one uh, hashtag is going to put it in bold. So that's the biggest uh, possible size of um, text, but the more uh, the more hashtags you put, so actually I'm gonna ah okay so so here I'm gonna gradually add more hashtags. You can see that you're gonna see that it's gonna be more and more smaller and smaller the title. Yeah, it's only showing through because there's no space. But maybe if I do, okay. So here you can see the four different sizes. I'm gonna remove those three bottom ones. But yeah, so that's how different text sizes work. And then for a little more complex, here you can add a title, and then if you put these uh, breaks underneath, you're gonna create this nice line to separate the title from the rest. Um, and the rest I created just text, but you can see a hyperlink in there. That's my Twitter profile. And the hyperlink is just this syntax. So uh, square brackets with what you want shown in text and then uh, actual brackets with uh, the hyperlink, the, the link um, that's behind this. And so I press cancel because I don't want to modify it. So I do this and I press here, it will take me to my profile. So it's a hyperlink. Just going to go back because I don't need to load my profile. Um, my Twitter profile, I mean, whatever. Uh, and then finally, we also have images that can be brought into play. So the syntax is clamation points, uh, square brackets, and then normal brackets. And here you include a link to a uh, an image. For this purpose, I usually, um, instead of taking image from the website or something, because I don't control the website, I'd rather uh, upload it, download the image and upload it myself to to uh, image hosting websites. That way I can control uh, the thing and I know that it's, it should remain there uh, unless that hosting website changes something, but that's rarely the case. Uh, I usually use Imgur for the, for these purpose, for this purpose, I use this 
websites and you can see here uh, the link with the picture which is a custom uh, logo it's just the tune analytics logo with the how to written on top and yeah so it's just pointing to this and here and since it's a png uh, transparent background also works and shows the the well transparency around the logo right Uh, but yeah, I think uh, this is it. I'm going to add uh, here at the bottom, or no, here, I don't know, somewhere up top, I'll add a link to this video so you can uh, easily find it. And hopefully this was helpful. Uh, do make sure to DM me on Twitter or Discord or whatever. You can check my profile uh, for my information. Uh, here my Twitter, my uh, Telegram, and my Discord usernames. Uh, if you want to message me about anything or have any questions, um, yeah, I'm, this was uh, Hildobi. I hope this was helpful, and I hope to see you around. Bye bye.